So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Danger Street 2, uh, the follow-up. This is uh, Danger Street 1, now in its protective ceiling. Um, so on here we have uh, Atlas on the cover. This is the variant cover. This is also the variant cover, which I paid an extra an extra dollar for. So this is a $6 comic at a regular... Uh, you know, this is kind of the issue with with comics these days. I, I buy almost nothing from DC anymore because I've had so many times where I bought one and and it turned out to be not th that good and I'm paying four or five bucks for a comic. And so um, I, I generally only buy Tom King at this point because he's a writer that I have faith in. Um, I know he's not for everyone. A lot of people don't like Tom King. Um, he has a very slow, methodical style of writing, but I happen to like it quite a bit. Uh, there was a YouTube channel I used to uh, watch um, dealing with comics, and I stopped watching it just because the guy didn't like Tom King, and that's fine. You don't have to like Tom King, but he just wouldn't stop. He just every time bringing up Tom King and how much he hates Tom King. So I was like, all right, you know what, whatever. Um, so Danger Street is based on a 13-issue series from 1975-76 uh, that was just one-issue stories. Each one, it was uh, um, different stories that had nothing to do with each other. And so Tom King, is, for whatever reason, decided to bring these characters together in one story. So I'm not, I'm not going to really avoid spoilers. I'm not going to try and give away things, but I'm not going to avoid spoilers. So in last issue, uh, so it's called Danger Street, uh, related to the dingbats of Danger Street. Uh, one of the dingbats was accidentally killed. Um, this would be um, Good Looks, created by Jack Kirby. And so the dingbats are kind of dealing with the death of their friend. So it opens up here and we have them eulogizing good looks. And uh, this is what I really love about Tom King. He is He's really good at characterization. He's really good at making you feel like the characters are real and you can identify with them and feel the sympathy. And so, you know, it's not just the death of a character. They, they really deal with the the ramifications of one of their friends dying. And so I, I really enjoy that. Um, I'm, I'm starting to dig the artwork more. I, I, I was a little critical on the first issue, but this time around, um, I, I, I'm, I'm liking it more. And Tom King has been one of the writers that's been blessed with working with a lot of great artists. And I think that is a an example of the faith that DC has in him. So not only are the dingbats dealing with the death of their friend, but also the person who accidentally killed Good Looks, which is Starman, um, he's also dealing with it because it was an accident and he's very remorseful over what he did, kind of overwrought. Um, the one thing I will say about Starman um, is that he's nothing like what the character was like in the first issue special. So he's an alien, and I don't remember if he's from a planet in our solar system or if he's, I think he's from another planet somewhere else. Um, very powerful being, not super powerful, not Superman level powerful, but more powerful than a human. And uh, he, I don't remember him ever speaking English, but now he's working with Warlord, who is not in his Warlord costume. So Manhunter is introduced this time around. Yeah, that was one of the stories. He's one of the various Manhunters. There's Jack Ryder. He's now a, uh, he's the alter ego of uh, the Creeper, and he's a conservative um, talk show host, um, or just a, a opinionator. And so this is Lady Cop, and Lady Cop is just doing her thing. She's non-superpowered, a regular Lady Cop, and she's doing the investigation. And I get the impression that she's the main protagonist in this story. And then, uh, so the cover features the green team. The green team were were uh, some super rich kids. Uh, so it'd be 1975, so a million dollars was like a lot of money back then, not so much money now. Um but they were good guys who were doing their thing. Here they are definitely villains. 
and um, they are pretty bad. So we're just kind of establishing that right now. Uh, this is some of my favorite writing, and so uh, one of the um, uh, one of the green team tells a joke, and it's it's pretty funny. If if Tom King came up with that joke himself, then kudos to him. Uh, the creeper is kind of torturing a fellow, and then again, here is what I love about Tom King. So they're back. Um, feeling the pain of losing their friend and just talking about it, um, dealing or uh, dealing with the ramifications of that. Um, here, uh, Lady Cop goes to tell um, Low Fat that, that um, she's looking, she is actively looking, but has not found anything. And, and Low Fat says, uh, then what the bleep? you telling me for and slams the door on her. So they're, they're very emotionally distraught. But again, so is Starman. And Starman has a plan uh, to uh, bring the boy back to life using the power. And then we go to Apocalypse, which I thought was really interesting because this, this whole story kind of has a very small feel to it. And then we have this, um, this, uh, huge large scale moment here where high father is meeting with dark side and um, so i won't tell you what goes on there but it's clearly i don't think this is a, a one one time occasion i think it's gonna they're gonna have to deal with uh the ramifications of dark side um we have more uh demonstration of how bad the green team is so they they are going to be undoubtedly the villains, and then there's uh, Codename Assassin, who apparently is also a villain, although he was not a villain in his one story in first issue special. And then we go back to Lady Cop, who finally at the very end here has a clue as to her first clue as to who these people were, because she's she's investigating the death of Low Fat and I'm sorry of um, Good Looks, and uh, so they have a. a Somebody identified the car that um, the the people were driving, or the person was driving that for the the person who killed um, Good Looks. So I'm really liking this series. I like this kind of stuff. I like when uh, good writers play around in the DC universe. I don't know how this is selling. Um, I know my comic store. Uh, they had the first issue, but they did not have the second issue. So the only reason I have this issue is because I pre-ordered it. And uh, yes, I did put in that if the a variant was available, I would like the variant. So I'm paying a little, paying an extra dollar for the variant. I actually kind of regret it on this one because I think the actual cover was much better than this one. But I like this cover. Uh, but it's just the respect I have for Tom Tom King that I'm willing to pay um, that extra for the variant cover. Because variants often are nicer, just in this case it wasn't. Uh, so I really like this stuff, and I really like just Tom King's style. He's very casual. I think his his best skills are in characterization, and um, and just ideas. And I think that he must have had a, a, an idea uh, overall. So from a uh, sales standpoint, I can't imagine that this is the best choice to sell a lot of issues. Um, put Batman in there. And I'm not saying put Batman in there. I'm saying for me, I love it. Uh, I would not put Batman in there. Hell no. But from a sales, sales standpoint, from a publisher, yeah, they probably would want Batman in every every comic. Um, so I'm really impressed that, that Tom King is not only doing his own thing, but DC's allowing him to do his own thing and um, produce this really oddball series with uh, the characters from first issue specials. So that's the second issue of Danger Street. I, I recommend both of these. Um, again, I used to be able to track sales. I can't do it anymore because once um, DC changed who their distributor was, they were not, I, I couldn't get the, those numbers anymore. So I don't know how these are selling, but I do highly recommend them. I think it's a great story so far. So that's the green team issue two.